Hi guys, it's Kalaji Aliana. This is one of my first videos where I actually speak directly to you. So it's kind of weird because I'm a newbie to YouTube, but this video is going to be called Everything Happens for a Reason. It's something that my mother always told me. Everything happens for a reason and when one door closes, another one opens. And sometimes I used to be like living by that but not really grasping the true meaning behind it. For example, like, whenever anything would happen to me, I would just complain and I would just focus solely on negative aspects. And when you're so pessimistic, it's like you miss the hidden beauty in whatever event that is. So the way I was able to make it through, <laughs> look at this cat, stop things, I'm making a video. <laughs> That's my cat, but yeah, my cat is one of my biggest supporters. As funny as that sounds, I'm sure the other crazy cat ladies and guys understand that. But back to what I was saying, this video is basically going to talk about how I have coped through things. Because a lot of people used to tell me, all I do is complain. And, you know, I was always basically hoping, not hoping for the worst. But, like, expecting the worst in every situation, basically. It's like a coping mechanism I have where I would set myself up in advance to be disappointed because I didn't want to be disappointed. So it's like I would make myself unhappy. Look at this cat. Thanks. Hello. Thinks. He thinks he owns this house. Look at him. I made my bed for the video. And usually, <laughs> he wants to be the center of attention. Usually, he's not even interested in anything I'm doing. And on Windows Live Editor, I don't know how to do it. But my MacBook is first generation. And it's good for editing my iMovie. But the QuickTime player has this high-pitched noise for the microphone. Whew, it's sad. Back to what I was saying. Um... So basically, it's kind of like, you know, a frown is actually an upside down smile, and there's like beauty and everything. I don't want to sound like corny, but I really used to be, I kind of was like obsessed with being unhappy. As crazy as that sounds, it was like, I want to be unhappy because I'm trying to avoid from being more unhappy. As crazy as that sounds, I'm going to try to like explain it. For example, like, I'm just going to make up a scenario. Imagine um, someone tells you when you're a child, like, I'm going to Disney World or something, but it's your parent that doesn't reside with you and separated or something from your other parent, and they have the tendency to get your hopes up and then say, like, Oh, Ayana, something came up, you know how work is or something. So over time, you broke, they broke your trust and you took everything they said with a grain of salt. It turned, it basically, you began to not trust them anymore because after getting your hopes high for all those years, they told you were going to go to Disney World. You said, well, let me just get in my mind that this person is a liar and they're never going to follow through with anything that they say. So like, you can't believe them anymore, they're not credible. So imagine like when you finally, they finally said, okay, we're really gonna go to Disney World. They showed you like the reservations, the brochures, and you still didn't believe them the whole entire time because, you know, it's kind of like, why should you? It's like, you don't wanna feel that heartbreak of getting your hopes up and getting it tore down again. So then the whole time you were at Disney World, you were in, well, on your way to Disney World, you were like in disbelief, you were like, waiting for some excuse to come up, like they were going to say, like, um, well, before we get there, I have to actually leave to go to work or something. That's kind of how um, I was. I'm trying to break out of that slowly, but it's like, after being lied to for so long, it's like, I'd rather not believe anything positive. It's like, if someone has a pattern of doing something to me, 
It's like now the trust is just broken. So anything you say, I don't believe, which is sad. But you know, I learned not to paint every person as being in the same category, whether it's guys, girls, friends, relationships. Some people actually do follow through on their word, and they aren't. They respect you enough not to lie. I've had situations where it's like a really minuscule thing, but I'm still lied to. And it's like, I'm not going to, you know, kill you if you just tell me the truth. You know, I don't want to meet up with you because it's raining or something. It's not like I have any control over you. I'm not an authority figure. I'm not going to beat you. I'm not your parent. I'm not going to put you out. So what's the worst you could hear from me if you just tell me the truth? And that's how a lot of my friendships and relationships ended because it was like this pattern of just lies. And I'm like, I'm not perfect, but I'm really open. I mean, you don't have to be a, just because you're a private person doesn't mean you have to lie. Whenever something occurs, you don't have to tell me in depth what happened, you know, but don't have me waiting for you and you come up with this far-fetched scenario. But um, basically, I'm kind of getting off topic. But so last year, at first, you know, when the new year started, it was funny. Like when it was like 11:59, and we were all had the confetti and the horns. We were like all screaming. I kept screaming. I was like, I'm not gonna really curse on this channel, but I was like, uh, school 2016. I hate 2016. I hate 2016. But I was like surrounded by family and then I started to look around and I was like, these people are the ones who got me through 2016 and made that year perfect. Although I was like really struggling with my own stuff, my family, they just showed up in full force. I mean, from from like my grandparents on my dad's side, you know, my uncle, even my father, who's all the way abroad in um, the Caribbean, even from afar, even virtually, just a phone call, just the webcam, the WhatsApp, he still played a part in everything. And my grandparents, my uncles, my great uncles, and of course my cousin, my brother. I mean, last year, it was just crazy. Like, I was, I was in my own feelings of betrayal and deceit and anger and it's like everyone in the family was paying for it so they used to always tell me like why don't I come around and stuff and I would just show my face really quickly and we kind of lost touch but last year was amazing because I reconnected with my brother from my father's side which I can which you'll see in all the videos and it was just so crazy because I always like I said in the um few minutes ago, I always believed that everyone was a liar. Um, I had no hope in no one. I kind of hated everyone. I was really isolated. So it was a, it was interesting because my brother, Shaquem, he was on my friends list on Facebook for so long. That's why I love Facebook, because you could really reconnect or whatever. But I never actually even looked at his page. I didn't know anything he was involved in. I didn't realize, like, now I'm like, he's the guy version of me. People say, like, we're so similar. And I missed out on a lot because I wasn't reaching out to him. Like, we never really spoke. I think he tried to speak to me, but I, I wasn't even paying attention, really. And I don't know how this happened. Um, I think I was looking for people to come to my induction. Not this one, but this is, um, this is, wait, let me not sound like an idiot. I'm pretty sure this is national... No, not national, sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm in, no, I'm in three honor societies. It's hard to keep up. National Society of Leadership and Success, um, Sigma Alpha Phi. It's the um, honor society for leadership and success. So I had to fulfill these steps to induction. I had to do the student, network, student networking team, fulfill goals, be actively involved in school, watch motivational speaker broadcasts, it took a while, but this one was June, so 
for my induction for Phi Beta Kappa. Somehow, I think I mentioned on Facebook, I was inducted. I never really knew that Facebook, people on Facebook were actually watching and supporting me. So they never liked or never said anything. So I didn't know they were actually... It's funny because in person, people would come up to me and be like, oh, I'm so glad you accomplished this. But I never, they never spoke to me on Messenger or nothing. So I thought like, I thought I was just posting stuff for no reason. So, I mean, I was posting for myself, but you know, I never got any like, as kind of like more... Not to judge anyone, but more stereotypical, like naked pictures or something, or Facebook, get a whole bunch of likes and attention. But I'm putting, like, I'm in this society, and no one's saying anything. Not that I'm doing it for their approval, but, you know, you know how that goes. So anyway, I didn't realize that Shaquem was watching my whole journey over the years, and we were friends on Facebook for six years. I had forgotten. So somehow I said, I mentioned it about my induction is on this day. I didn't read. I don't know if I messaged him. I think he said I messaged him personally somehow. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm preparing for my induction. Telling everyone, Ray, Justin, that's my cousin. My brother is like my cousin. I didn't think, as usual, anyone cared or was paying attention. So here I go. And I didn't realize that my brother and cousin, and like him, had such a close relationship. I had no clue that they were always at each other's house. I was just in my own thing. I have my own issues with um, someone in the family that I will not name, and I, it was like a domino effect. Because of that incident with those two individuals, I kind of just categorized everyone as being against me, which wasn't fair. It's like I took that whole, I took all of them and just grouped them together because like they shared the same last name or something, and that wasn't fair, you know. So I kind of missed out on a good relationship due to me just. I'm not going to really beat myself up. I mean, I was really hurt by the individual. So it was like I was afraid that everyone else was in support of what had happened. I just thought the world was against me. So um, back to what I was saying. I get to my... I, as usual, being pessimistic, I thought no one was going to come. It started getting late, and I'm in school, and I was really sick, but I was determined to get emotional. Oh my god, I was really sick. I didn't feel good at all. My head was spinning. I had my own medical issues. Um, I went to school. I dressed all up. I made sure I went through the sickness. Wore my dress. Everything. I made it through the semester. Um, this was around May. Like May 8th. So I do um, some assignments in school and I get to the cafeteria. And I'm calling my cousin Justin. You know, because it's getting late. I think it was starting at like 6.30. And I'm calling like I'm crazy. I'm like, are you guys coming? Because, you know, I'm, I believe no one actually means anything they say at that point last year. So I'm just like, they're not going to come. So I felt kind of hurt. I decided to start walking to the Performing Arts Center. That's where the five day to cap induction in my school was being held. I don't want to get emotional. So, uh, you know, my school is, it has different buildings. So I come out of, what building is it? <laughs> I come out of the cafeteria building, as I'm going to call it, and across the street is the administration building. And then when you keep going, it's the Performing Arts Center where they have all these shows and dinners and inductions. So I start dusting, and Ray is like, Justin's laughing. I'm like, oh, you're going to make it at 11 p.m.? And he's like, ha-ha. I didn't realize they actually, you know, were coming because I just was so negative. I didn't want to get my hopes up, you know, after having them brought down so much because it hurts after really believing in someone and something and to have it crashing down. It's like, you feel like an idiot. So I started walking from the cafeteria. I started walking past the, the bookstore. I'm not going to cry to my new subscribers. They're going to think I'm crazy. I don't want to get any troll comments. But it's just like, in that moment of my whole negativity of what I was going through, I didn't even realize that people were actually watching and supporting me. And it just was so crazy. It was the best feeling. So I come walking out of the cafeteria, and then I look up. And I was so sick. 
and disoriented. I thought I had imagined what I saw. I'm walking and I see this boy. It's empty. It's really empty for some reason. It's full that day. I see this boy. Well, I thought he was a man. I was like, I'm imagining stuff. Because I hadn't seen my brother in so long. I hadn't seen him since I was 15. So I was 20, 22. I'm bad with math, but what is that, eight years or something? All right, so I look to my right, and then I see someone that really resembles my father. Because if you see any pictures of my father, they say that like him is like a split image of him. And I'm a split image of my grandmother. So imagine me, already sick. I looked up. I thought that my father came from Guyana to America, and this was a surprise from my brother and cousin. I look up in shock. I'm just looking at him without seeing anything. I hadn't seen him in so long. And he really grew up in such a splendid image of my father, I swear. So I'm just looking, and I'm just like, just look like death came over me or something. Like I was in shock. I'm walking. I'm walking, and I'm about to walk past him. I'm just looking at him, and I'm like, I'm seeing, I'm really just, I'm really sick right now because I'm, it's either I'm seeing my father for real, and this is a surprise, or I'm just so sick that. I'm trying to find something familiar, and my mind is just imagining something that's comforting, which is my father. So I just walk and walk and walk, and I'm just looking. And as I get closer, I'm like, this is my father. His father came back. It's like I became like a little girl again. So I'm just like, I'm like, I couldn't even say his name because I didn't want to say it wrong. I hadn't seen him in so long. I was like, and then he was like, sis. And I was like, check him. So then I just like stopped. And I'm just like, is it really you? It was so sad because I was so used to being disappointed. I thought that he didn't even care. I didn't even know he really was reading the posts and stuff. And he really had intention of coming all the way where my school is, you know, it's a, for people don't, that don't know Brighton Beach, Manhattan Beach, Lenton Hill, Coney Island, um, any of those neighboring areas is pretty far out, you know. So I just couldn't believe he actually was so supportive. And I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it because I was thinking it was Justin and Ray. But they were on their way with um, James and everybody. I just couldn't believe it. That he went out of his way to come after not seeing... Imagine not speaking to someone for eight years. You probably... Oh, I'm not going to anything they have. And it was like during that time, I really needed that support. Because I felt so alone in the world. From the issues with the person I was residing with. The management of the apartment. I just felt alone, like, I felt like, not suicidal, but I felt like I just was living day to day, you know, like I just was living and everybody has their expiration date and I just was going to live miserably up until my death. I had no hope, even though I was going to school and I was accomplishing so many things, I was in free on society, through it all, I was traveling from Fordham University, that's where I live, basically. Imagine all the universities that was in my area, Hostel, Bronx Community College, Fordham University was behind my house. My school was my home. So I would take the B train, the D to the B, from like the last stop to the last stop. It took a long time. I had morning classes, but I really, I really still did it. But I felt like I was doing it for nothing because I didn't have any support system. I didn't understand my life, I was so, I don't even know what word to use, I was so full of, I just felt like everyone hated me, so I hated everyone, I was very, very sad during that time, 
but it's like I was sent reminders. You know, sometimes when your soul has a mystic, there's reminders and signs in the world to show you that you're not alone. There are things out here for you. You have a purpose in life. But it's like I was so clouded by the misery that I was feeling in my apartment that I could not enjoy anything. It was just really sad what a negative living environment could do to your psychological state. You know? My brother, who I hadn't seen for eight years, you know, back then I didn't really place any I just was so busy in my own life. I, I wasn't really connected with family like that. I just felt like because of that individual and that individual, everyone was the same. And I was harboring on to stupid ideas about, well, we're not from the same mother, so let me just not interact with anyone. And I just was... I didn't realize, you know, How much of an amazing person he is, you know? Ray, Justin, and Shaquem. I'm not gonna cry right now. Whatever, I don't care. My subscribers could be the real me. Last year, I really don't think that I would have um, made it without having that connection with my brother Ray. And Justin is basically my brother, my brother Justin and my brother Shaquem. And even my sister-in-law going over there, having a good time. Because it's like where I had lived, I felt like I was going to die. It just was like no support. I mean, I'm not, I could have been homeless. It could have been worse, but I didn't feel happy there at all because it's like, I felt like I was just being sabotaged every step of the way. But it's like I was showed, I was shown you do have support. So the whole of last year from April, which you'll see in my video where I get really personal about my suicide um, ideation issue during April of last year. I, I don't really like to sugarcoat things. A lot of people tell me I'm just too open. The reason why I'm so open is like I'm open to let other people know you're not alone and let people know I'm not perfect. Sometimes when I meet people, you know, they'll be angry at me for some reason, thinking I'm, thinking I'm perfect or something. Cause I'm always laughing, but they don't know what's like beneath that. So I like to be realistic. Not blunt, but I'm always saying all kind of things and they're like, why are you putting yourself out there like that? It's because I'm not ashamed of what I've went through, but if it wasn't for me connecting with Ray, Justin, and Jackson, and everybody else, I don't know where I would have been. I don't. And it's like, it's funny because in 2015, after moving out, because we did reside together at one point, 2012, after I moved out due to certain things that occurred from an unrelated individual, I just categorized everyone as the same, and I did see Justin and Ray in 2013. I would go to my grandparents' house as like a common meeting space, and we would meet up, but I would never go back to that borough. I did see them from time to time, but then 2014, everyone came to my house and told me, but 2015, I had a falling out with some, something that resurfaced, and again, I just shut off. I didn't talk to them from like December all the way till April and that's when I was like, you know, I want to die. I can't take this anymore because it's so much I want to say. I'm, it's going to be different videos. This is just my first one. I was in a relationship, you know, for a very long time. And I was under the impression that we were going to get married and do all these things. So it was like, a blatant slap in the face into reality. You know, I'll talk about that in another video, but I do touch on that in my book, which I'm going to be posting a video about my book, where I go into more details, whatever. But anyway, I keep jumping from 
thing to thing. Basically, that was my support. It's like, they would not let me fail. They would not let me lay in the bed and cry. And woe is me. I hate my life. I'm just a victim. Justin, he, he didn't let me do that. All of them. But Justin was at my house every day. All the way another borough away. I was so close to like freaking New Rochelle. What is that? New Rochelle was right there. Um, Yonkers. That's how far up I was. And there in Brooklyn, Queens and stuff. We came to my house every day. We spoke about things. We went to the buffet. We were just having a great, great time. And it was like I wasn't affected by my housemate anymore because I had this support that was visiting me. You know, I don't want to seem like a punk or something, but it was showing like, here, she has this. You know, you can't kill her with your tactics anymore. He was there for me. We spent a lot of time together. We spoke. Um, in April, I spoke to him about why I went missing and what I felt. He listened to me. And it was the three musketeers again. Well, four musketeers, because Shaquem was right there. And basically, I don't think you should, you know, link everyone together if there's an incident that occurs. You should hold the individual accountable. But it was like I was so... I felt such despair. I was like, it was you because that's your dad. And this is just, I just was grouping everyone and it just wasn't fair. I was missing out on the three and four musketeers who I love so much, you know, because the issue was from something brewing from years, years ago with older people. And I'm categorizing my siblings, which have nothing to do with it. They're just caught in the crossfire, you know, which was, it hurt me because I was alone for all those years and I didn't realize how much they actually loved me. But back to Shaquem, it, it just was crazy at the induction because it's like, it's like my father was standing in front of me. As crazy as that sounds, I mean, like, I swear I'll put up some pictures or something of how much they look the same. It's so freaky, you know? And it was like I was, in a way, I felt even happier because it was like I was spending time with my father, as crazy as that sounds. Like him, one of my biggest supporters in the skies. I had no clue. I had no clue how much things we had in common, how much he likes arts and performing arts, and how much he likes networking, and how much I love those things too. So it was like a real eye opener, whatever. You know, so. The induction ceremony, you'll see it all from the video, from the pictures in the video. It's called um, My 2016 Year Interview, Suicide Awareness. And it just talks about how if I was dead, you know, most likely I wouldn't have been accomplishing anything dead, whether you believe in reincarnation or what. I wouldn't have been able to finish my journey of college. I would have went in vain. So I just show from the beginning, from, you know, after that whole negative mind, I wanted to die. You know, I don't want to be a burden on my family, but after that, it was like they would not see me fail. I was with them all the time, whether it was my house, whether it was an event, just, you know, they were showing me, like, we are here for you. We're not a burden. You don't have to do with these things alone. You know, and it was like I really needed that. I really, really did. Because I just thought the entire world was against me. I really did believe that. And it's not against me. After that, I realized how many other supporters I had. You know, how much people, I just sound arrogant, but how much people admire me. How much people like my personality. Back then, I just thought because of the housing situation, I thought everyone was like that person. So everyone just hated me. And I was so negative, I couldn't see how much I had accomplished from getting my 2015, getting my um, security license. I have three fire guards, we worked at Yankee Stadium, different comp three different companies. I was doing um, like crowd control, like you know when the people come, sign their books and do all kind of things. I was like guarding celebrities, it was like, but I was still residing with this negativity so it was like 
I couldn't even see all of that. I couldn't even see. Like, oh, I'm accomplishing so much because that individual was just there to just kill me every step of the way. Like, and I would just focus solely on that. And I hated myself. You know, I'm not going to give any detail of who this is or whatever. Slander anyone. But I forgot who I was. I stopped accepting, praising, and loving myself to try to understand what, why that person seemingly hated me when I forgot about how many people actually did like me, you know. But 2016 was, it was a struggle. But then it's like, it wasn't a struggle because I had them there to hold my hand because even the most strong person, it's good to be social and stuff like that, you know. I think it's like, you know, you could fulfill the basic needs of a baby when it's born, feed the baby, clothe the baby, um, change the baby, make sure they bathe and stuff. But kind of like in The Sims, when I had The Sims, you know, when you didn't socialize with the baby, the baby would die or the CPS would come through the door, you know, the social worker would come and take your baby. And I was like, well, I fed the baby, well, I clothed the baby, but it's like human interaction and socialization is an essential part of life. Like, even the most isolated person, if they're not getting that fulfilled, it could, like, kill you. Kind of like if you're isolated in the attic somewhere, you're eating, you're doing all of that, but you're not getting any interaction, you know? So I really needed this social part of my life because at first it was like that person was my world who I was residing with. That was my world because I never really had friends. So I put everything into that person, and then when it when it crumbled, it's like I was dead. So then I had to find myself through 2016, and I found it with my family, who expressed to me how much they loved me, how much I was funny, and all this stuff. I'm not saying like live for people's perception of you, but it helped me see myself that these things were true. Like I was a good person, and I really thought I was evil because of the other person you know, being evil to me, I was like, it must be me. So I internalized everything. And I was like, I just hate myself. I hate myself. Because it must be a flaw within me why this person doesn't like me. Whatever. So it was like I was killing myself, trying to do all these things like a slave. And it should just not have been. So the induction, that's the induction. It was, it was just phenomenal. All the people that came out, you know, after believing no one was going to come in and see my brother after eight years, I just kept staring at him in disbelief. I know he was wondering, like, what are you saying at? Like, he probably gets that a lot. I just kept looking at him like, I can't believe this. I can't believe. Because, you know, me, Ray, and Justin grew up together. We never really saw Shaquem, but I felt like we had so much in common. It was like Shaquem was there for all of our little you know, events and growing up, because it's like the apples, you know, they say you don't really fall far from the tree, so people that meet me and Ray, they're like, oh, you're just like your dad, and Chuck Kim is no different, he has some of the same qualities as the family, so it was like he did grow up with us, it was so crazy, I was like, we finished each other's sentences, we laughing, and it's like no one around us knows we had not seen each other in eight years and didn't really grow up together, but it, we still had so much in common, it was like we never left, you know, the same family, same interests. It was still there. And it just was so crazy because, like, me, Shaquem, Ray, <laughs> I used to always say this thing, let's reenact it. And that's how I knew I wanted to do some type of film, some type of publication. Every word out of my mouth was, let's reenact it. I knew that word from being, like, five years old, let's reenact it. And then Ray is like, yeah, let's reenact it. And I'm telling you guys, when I find, like, when my channel really gets up there, when I get a professional camera, I'm going to be more dedicated. When I find our, please God, you know, after passing to my grandmother, they, like, ransacked the house and took mad stuff. When and if I'm able to find my home videos, oh, my God, that's going to be crazy. I'm going to do, like, a reaction video. Me and Ray used to have toy guns. We used to reenact all kinds of films. We recorded every aspect of our lives, and I'm talking about before small cameras, before phones, 
it's like 2000 or something, 2002. We have this big camera where you gotta like look through with the beam, and we're recording every aspect of our lives. And then it's so crazy because every time we get together, it's like we're crazy. I'm like, let's take a picture, let's record, let's record. And that's how I ended with this channel because I always was recording all this stuff. And I'm like, why am I recording it? Let's put it together, let's do something with it. So Ray, he was always recording something, taking pictures as a child. Grandpa, everything, they have all these photo albums. They want to record and take a picture of everything. Ray, he got to get a channel too because he was always doing nonsense. And then when I reconnect with Shaquem, I see him making all these funny videos. I see him with a whole fan base, thousands of followers, business cards. And I'm like, was I blind on Facebook? It's not that I hated him. I would stay away from Facebook because I'm like, everyone on Facebook hates me and they only want to see if I take off my clothes or something, whatever. So I hated everyone on Facebook that was on my friends list. So I would never go on and see nothing on my news feed. I just see how much he was doing, which is weird. I was like, wow, he really reminds me of myself. And through him, it's like I was inspired to be more creative because it's like, I kept saying for years, like a lot of my old friends know that I always love doing skits. I'm always like the life of the party, doing something funny. I always said I want to make a YouTube. 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 From 2014, because I just feel like YouTubers inspire people. Like, if it wasn't for YouTube, all right, my supporters in 2016 that got me through was YouTube, my brothers and family, etc., and my cat. YouTube, I used to be in the bed crying sick, and I would go to YouTube and type in moving vlogs, and I would just watch people move all day long watch them box up stuff, watch them talk, and I'll put in blog this, how to do this. I mean, I was obsessed with YouTube. I would watch YouTube for inspiration, and that's when I realized I wanted to do a moving blog, you know, but I ended up losing my camera. Oh, that's the whole point of the story. All right. So I ended up losing my camera, and um, that was a blessing in disguise for me because it was like I had all these pictures on Google Photos and Drive and thousands of them and I kept saying I'm gonna I'm gonna make this I'm gonna make that so when I moved in um in November I had a whole bunch of footage on my camera of the entire year of 2016 and I was like you know when you keep saying you're gonna do something but you never actually do it it was like I was so content with having the footage I never put it together I never got anything off my memory card I would have never started this channel I would have kept saying I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. But what had happened was um, December 31st when everybody got together for the party that we had. I'm recording with my camera, I believe. I was recording some stuff. And I feel like I should have never even brought it outside because I didn't really record much. All the videos were on my tablet. But the moving vlog, that hurt me because that whole moving process was on my camera. And it had like... My grandparents who were old and walking with their canes, hugging me, and then, and I showed my old apartment. I showed my grandma that passed, you know, some of her stuff. That killed me. Like, that footage I didn't want to lose. And I didn't want to lose the footage from my induction and stuff, but at least I got some of that. But it wasn't until that happened that I decided to do all these things. Like, let's create a channel based on what I have so far. And then I started, you know, backing up all my files. Had I not lost the camera, I probably would have lost even more footage because I wouldn't have thought it was serious and did it with urgency to create the channel, whatever. It all started with me wanting to do that moving vlog. So now, you know, I go on Facebook and I do all these live videos and then so much has happened. I started writing my book and my book was my journal of either encounters, you know, Encountered in life from, I want to say, mainly from like 2013 to 2016 when I moved out of my own, all the struggles or whatever. And then I ended up with a, a blog that is getting some popularity now. I ended up with a blog dedicated to foster youth and my experience, my journey, and how to help them on the path to self-sufficiency. You know, the things that your agency doesn't tell you, because the agency sometimes is like, well, I don't want to fulfill any of your goals in this permanency meeting. They drag on things because it's like a, a cap, which I'll talk about later in my other foster care videos. 
there's like a cap on what age you can claim these benefits, you know? And I feel like, well, I, I don't even feel, we are entitled to these benefits due to the struggles and hardships we dealt with doing foster care. So the money and all of that, it shouldn't be a privilege. It's, it's like an obligation. That's a reward for being abused and just out. So that's a story for another day, you know, as my channel gets bigger, I'll talk about my locations and my book. But um, I only want to do this video for like 15 to 20 more minutes. Just a test video. Hopefully it doesn't delete. It's going to look kind of raw because I'm not going to edit anything because I don't know how to do it on Windows Live. Um, but it's like, from that, it was like a domino effect. I was so distraught. You should have seen me. My cousin probably thought I was crazy because what had happened was, I'll be honest, that camera, that camera was given to me years ago at the beginning of my relationship with my ex-fiance or whatever. That was a gift. That was like one of my engagement gifts, you know? He gave me that camera. And we were going to this big vacation. I don't want to think about it. But um, when I lost the camera, it's like I had lost him. You know, I was like, oh my God. So it's like I was feeling a lot of loss, the loss of the footage, but then the loss of the camera itself that I held so closely to me. It was like, the universe is telling me, let him go. Erase this camera. It's one of the last things that is of meaning to you that you really have for me. It's crazy because I don't know where that camera went. We were shopping for the party. Um, the last thing I remember is recording on the line in Western Beast. And Apparently someone pickpocketed me and they thought it was funny, you know, to take my camera. And this is like, I don't even have no pictures or nothing. The camera is like, it's like this. And it has the shutter that comes out like this. It's old. You know, that camera, it's the old time digital camera. The one, it's like the flash. And I was so cold, like really, you're going to steal something of no value. Like, so I was distraught. I almost, I was burning the food at the party. I couldn't concentrate. I was so sick at the party. I couldn't concentrate at all. And my brother's like, you burning the food? What's going on? I just kept crying. I, my head was spinning. I kept thinking, let me go back and get the camera. Let me go back and get the camera. But nobody was about to drive me over the way. You know, we were in Queens. And it was a, you know, section of Queens that really spread out. We were in wherever we were, which is really far away. And then they weren't going to take me all the way back there because then the food... The food and everything would have went in vain because we spent all day. Basically, the party people was kind of coming and popping in heaven, and we had nothing ready. So it was like I was the cook, and I was like, I got to do this. But my mind couldn't even function. I went through mad, uh, a whole bunch of pain and stress for that whole day. You know, and then I focused on the party and had fun during the party. And then by the time I woke up for the morning, I was really just... I just was, you know, distraught. I was acting really bizarrely. I was trying to, like, break into the car. I was like, someone better open this car right now. I was screaming, pacing up and down the street. I was just hoping that if I looked in and out of the seat, maybe it was somewhere deep in the seat. Because when we got home, I said, where's my camera? Where's my camera? I couldn't find it. I'm looking through the seat. So then I'm like, maybe, I was asking everybody, is it in your bag? Is it in this map? But I was like, maybe I missed it. So I, I went in the car and it was like reality hit. Justin is just like, he sees me pacing up and down the street. He tries to open the other car and I'm just looking at him crying, shaking. He's just looking at me and he was like just silent because he knew it wasn't in there, but I just kept looking. I was like, no, oh no. I was like pulling up the seats crying. But if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have no YouTube channel. I would not have, all right. I would not have no, I started off with the hair YouTube channel. And then I wanted to separate my content. That's Gwen Lovely. So, like, this week, I would review. And then I wanted, like, a life lessons page, like, college page. So then I created College Galliana. And then I had the one for my Sims when I started recording my Sims for the Sims. So I love to customize the Sims, um, houses and stuff. People want to, like, download my houses the way I deck it out or whatever. And um, what's the other one? Oh, Cooking with Yarn. So, due to my pain, you know, of trying to, because even though I removed myself from a living situation, 
It's like I had carried it on me, as, you know, post traumatic stress or whatever. I was being taken from the situation, but it was still haunting me. So I was trying to find ways, you know, to counsel myself in a way. So I started with the cooking again. Because, you know, a lot of people always told me they love the way I cook. My friends would come to my house. My roommates would love me to cook for them. So I really put myself into cooking. Like, I would cook without even eating it. It's like cooking was a release. Like, when I moved into my first apartment, so far I lived in three apartments. This one is my single apartment. Yay. But before that, I had two different homes with rooming situations before the fourth home. It was like from my parents' house, I went into the foster home. And then after that, it was my first apartment, rooming. My second apartment, rooming. And then now my single apartment. So that was the span of like 17, 18, 19, 20, 22. So it was six years until this point. So I'm losing my train of thought. This is why I like being able to edit. This is why this video is going to be so long. Oh my god. Oh, the housing situation. Okay. Um. So, basically, what am I even talking about, really? I really just lost my whole train of thought. I started talking about the housing situation. I don't even know, but let me talk about something else now. Because I just forgot everything I was saying. That's how traumatic it was. Oh, the post traumatic stuff. Okay, so the window situation. Even though with the post traumatic stress, when I was removed from it, and now I'm, remember, I was so used to being negative and let down. So now that I have my own apartment, sometimes I wake up and I'm, in, I'm excited, but at first I was in disbelief. I was really scared of the change, and the change was for the positive, but I was afraid of moving from the negative situation and being in a more negative situation. So I was so reluctant. When I was going through the whole application process, I was so reluctant because I was like, what if I move into a worse situation? I'm already content with this misery. Um, I don't want to move into a more miserable predicament. I was so conditioned to abuse that it was like, it was crazy. But it was like, that's another video that I'm going to do. I'm going to do a video of my housing explanation, and then I'm going to do a, a housing detail, how to get it. And there's another one I'm going to do, a reflection of me admitting my wrong. Because I did play a part in certain things. But like I said, I like to take accountability for my actions. It's easier said than done, but I don't like to lie. I mean, I'm not a perfect person. It's supposed to be all sinners. But when faced, if there's oh, obvious facts that I did something, I would never blatantly lie in someone's face. It's just... It's not me, a lot of protect my image. I'm so open, like, people are always in shock at how much I reveal, because it's like, I have nothing to lose. Like, if I say something, and you say it back, what are you going to do? I don't, I don't really care. This is how I am. I'm not really easily embarrassed, because I'm not ashamed of myself. That's why with the book, I touch on all kinds of things. But I'm not even going to talk about that, because I'm always jumping from things to think of this my first video. Book and blog and foster care is another story. This is just part one of how I persevered. So back to the main content, the induction. So I'm in the, the performing arts center, and I'm, I'm kind of negative still. I'm like, oh, my brother's here. Wow, this is amazing. Lost all those pictures, but that's okay. I'm like, Ray and Justin and everybody else is never going to come. So I get on stage, and... You know, I have that in the other video. I'm like, ah, oh, Mayana, I'm studying this. And so I came and just like, woo, go in. And right after that, I come out and I see Ray, Justin, and a whole group. And everyone's grabbing me. They're like, you look so nice. Oh, my God. And I'm just looking up like they really came or whatever. And, you know, I was so quiet in school. Besides last year and this year, I never spoke to nobody. This year, I'm really getting a lot of friends in school because I was always so skeptical. I was like, I don't trust this person, I don't trust that person. But now you should see me. Like, you should see me. But <laughs> basically, 
all kind of classmates that were being inducted were there that never even seen me before. And we were all talking. You know, I never seen you before. And you see the pictures of all of us. It was like my brothers went to the school. We're all just jumping around, eating, throwing flowers. They're like, oh, yeah. And I didn't realize people in school actually liked me. I thought, you know, everyone hated me. It was, it was, my self-esteem was so low. My impression of myself was just, I don't even know. It was like I was, which I talk about in my book. I'm not going to go into detail though because this video is about to end in 10 minutes. I was, I was alive but dead. So it was like I felt like I'm just waking up every day. I'm not going to try to kill myself, but I'm waiting to die. It was really that bad, you know. It was that bad. It was really bad, but so much has happened. And if it wasn't for that camera going missing, I would not have created this channel. And it was through my blog and everything that I was able to connect to other foster youth. And it was through putting all this content on my Facebook that I realized I wanted to do catering and open up my own business, which I spoke to. I'll talk about that on another day. And that's mostly my cooking with Yan. Um, Facebook page, and then that led me to the YouTube cooking with y'all. But I'll end it with this. For 2017, I said, this is going to be my year. I said, I'm not going to make any more excuses. And everyone has to start from somewhere. So even if people's claiming how my video is low budget or whatever, at least I'm starting from somewhere to get like a connection, like a fan base. I'm starting from the bottom, you know. And you, you can't just jump overnight into success unless you're lucky somehow. I don't know what that is, but that's pretty rare. You have to start out from the beginning and all the naysayers and everything. I don't really care about because I'm, I'm starting from somewhere. Over the course of January, once I lost the camera, I started writing. I turned my journal into the book. I got the first draft. And then out of nowhere, I told you I came. I want to do cooking. Let's create this cooking page, you know. And then we created the cooking page, started getting attention, and from there, I'm sitting down talking to people about getting a, a grant to sell my products out of their restaurant. And that's when I was like, I'm going to get my food handling license. I had the business cards. I'm still in the process, but look at how much I've accomplished. And if I would have, you know, succeeded with suicide last year, none of this would have happened. I would have died in a miserable apartment, and I wouldn't even have got this apartment, which took me four years to get. Six years of misery, but four years of being on the waiting list to get. And the whole reason I moved into those apartments was I was waiting for this. So I finally got this, and it was just crazy. Shaquem, you know, I really love Shaquem. Whatever, that's like the boy version of me, even though I'm like three years old. Than him. He came all the way over here early in the morning when I signed the lease and everything. He came here, and this is really far away. This is like... I'm living in Manhattan or something, basically. So he came, and he didn't judge me. He just saw everything. And I just was like, I got it. I got this appointment. I remember the day when Justin came to my house, and I had all the paper of acceptance. And I remember when I was sitting in my grandparents' house, because I literally ran away from where I was living. Not that I'm a coward, but I could not take it anymore. I wanted to be close to the school. And I couldn't deal with the negative environment. It, it was like killing my soul, you know. Even though the person wasn't physically hurting me, it was like a mental warfare. So I needed to reflect. I needed to get some peace of mind. I had goals to fulfill, and I felt like I was being at a standstill or whatever. So I moved. I made a decision with Shaquem. Shaquem said, why don't you go to your grandparents' house? Contacted my dad. went to my grandparents' house. Justin Ray helped me every step of the way. Went over there, even though it was for such a short period of time, I want to say a month and a half to two months. During that time, I was able to do some classes. I was able to fill that supportive environment of my family, my old house that I grew up in. And um, from there, I'm laying in bed sick, you know, head spinning. I'm just laying in, laying in the room, in the bed. I was just... I would sleep all day because I felt like only when I'm dreaming, I'm happy. It was really bad. So I just was laying in the bed. And all of a sudden, I decided to check my Gmail. I get an email with a whole bunch of exclamation points. And it says, 
apartment all for reach for the love of you. And I said, this can't be happening. This can't be happening, but it was like, I paved the way for that. I felt like if it wasn't due to my persistence, and I was a little stern with them, but not disrespectful, because it's not what you say, it's the way you say it. I mean, I was in that management office, because where Fordham University is, across the street is a management office for Daicha. I just kept saying, how was the priority if I've, if I've had to, how was the priority? Four years is a priority? So I was over there every day. I was like, please, please. My stressful situation led me to really follow up constantly. I was talking to supervisors. They were, they were doing things to people they probably would never do. They were, they were emailing field management offices. They were emailing supervisors. They usually don't send out an email to inquire about someone's case. You just wait and wait. I was like, please help me. I need you to help me. I was in there from like January 2016. I was going in there about every month, and then when it got to, yeah, I was in there every week, actually. Every week I was in there, so I, they were going to know my name. And I think if it wasn't for my pers- persistence that they wouldn't have, they would have swept me under the rug. All of a sudden, apartment offer reached after four years. My brother came. We were just exploring the area, because, you know, it has, like, um, I have another video. I'm not a Shaq's Adventures to me. Our China trip, because we went to Little Korea Town, and... It was just so amazing, but this video, I know I'm talking so much. I don't even know if anyone's going to watch it to the end, but if you grasp anything from this, is that I'm not perfect. You're not perfect, you know, but I think it's really important to be content with yourself, and it's, it's all based on your my phone ring. I'm going to have to get that soon. At three more minutes. It's all based on your perception. So in my chapter book, one of my things I say is, it's all based on your perception. It's like, you can see the glass half empty or half full. You know, you could say, woe is me, I'm so depressed, all of this stuff has happened to me. Or you could use that being not content with your situation and use that as motivation, like how I did. I was not content with what was going on in my life, and I just decided to make a change or whatever that was best for me. And I've accomplished so many things so far, and I'm not even finished. So now it's like, I love life. I want to live. I want to finish this. And my memoir, I really want to get out there, you know, to inspire people. And then I'm going to write two more books. Recipe book for Cooking with Yon, because a lot of people like my recipes. And I'm going to talk about how I did create space and publishing and all that stuff in another video. But... This is just a video of getting to know me. Um, like my mom said, when one door closed, another one opens. And I'm not perfect, but I did say to 2017, I'm not going to let anything hold me back. And one thing I live by is you do not fail until you quit. You know, if I would have just threw my dreams out the window and said, well, I don't have a camera for YouTube, I don't have this. And I need to be perfect when I start up these videos. I would have never started it. So it's just crazy. Everything that happened, the way I even wrote my book is funny. The way I got my draft written is because something had happened that really upset me. And I just wanted to vent. So I got up in the middle of the night. I got a binder and I put everything together. And I started journaling from, I started journaling from something that had happened when I went to go give in the keys to the last apartment. It's like they weren't done with me yet. It was still with stories about this and this. So after that, I went to Barnes & Noble and I picked up a, um, a journal. I got one minute left. I can't show you the journal. I'll do that in another video. But basically, you know, I felt that support from my family. And if it wasn't for the camera being gone, I would have never, I would have just kept talking and never put in any action or whatever. But I always encourage people, you know, you're going to wake up to another day, hopefully. It's always another chance. You always have another chance for improvement, you know? If something happens, even people are para, um, paraplegic, I think that's how you say it, amputees, that guy, Stephen Hawking, he's still getting things done. Nothing should stop you. 
If the Nazi down a little, give me a little time to take off, you could get back, you know, even through all the classes that I dropped and everything. I'm still here. People was like, oh, you dropped in class, you're not serious about the education. I have my own reasons for that, but I still have my three honor societies. I'm going to do another video about my group assignments and why I, why I hate and love group assignments and how that helped me persevere. <laughs> but it's like, I see the beauty in everything now. It's like, I just woke up. From when I, from last year, I started realizing the beauty of things. And when I really moved on my own and started reflecting, I realized how many chances you have. I just was like, an eye open. I was like, I was like, oh my God, I could do this. I could do this. And I wake up, I was doing interviews for my catering restaurant thing I wanted to do. I was networking, networking. Cause you know, you can't be isolated if you wanna, you gotta network. So I started networking with other youth, other blog owners, older people, you know. But I do another video on my major, why I chose it, my book, <laughs> a whole bunch of things. But this is just the first one that I said I was gonna do a reflection of what comes to my mind. But this is College Galliano. Thank you for watching, listening, subscribe. Um, you can connect with me on Facebook. Foster Youth or anyone who needs inspiration, you can see my blog. Um, Jumpstart your future dot wordpress dot com and if you want to see my hair videos for wig reviews whatever <laughs> I'm not going to talk about wigs on this stage you could go to Gwen Lovely you can ask me any questions I'll like do a webcam with you or something you can anonymous, anonymously comment down below um but yeah it's my first video I just want you to understand who I am. I think I'm gonna put this on the introduction video, like who am I? But it's Gwen sorry, it's not Gwen Lovely, that's my hair persona. It's Kalish Galliano and this is my channel. This phone keeps ringing how to go over there. I think it's important. I hope it's that thing I've been wishing for. But um I love you guys and the sky's the limit. Until death you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. That's why I created this channel. So I love you. It's Kali Gayana. And I'll see you later. Bye.